Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. It's once again those super final games of season 25. And let me get everyone up to speed. And you know what? We are in for some real trades. We already seen six games with six decisive results. I want to focus my attention on game two, looking at the Kasparov variation. So we have a 12 move book, and let's look at it a bit closely. This is the super final game of season 25 between Stockfish and Leela. Stockfish, this side, starts up from this very position. And because we might not be able to straightforward see what's going on, let's backtrack to move zero. We saw a d4, knight of six, c4, e6, and after knight of three and this opening, this is how the game continued. Bishop b7, bishop g5, bishop b7, and e3. Delight exposes everything in this way. The knight is eliminated, and with the knight also coming off. This bishop backs off to f4. Lila castles. And now this challenge. Lila sneaks in with this check. His Majesty moves out. And now with takes and takes, Lila returns the bishop back to e7. So he's done his job. h4 appears out of nowhere. And the book ends in this way. So this side has some clear advantage, but this is nothing new. Rook h3 led to Lila to develop the knight. Stockfish gets to advance his sky, and this move is significant. And let's see why. Lila ignores any potential this guy has to offer on the king's side, and to show it, Lila shoots off with this guy on the other side. A5 appears to be a very decent move because it would allow the potential attack on the queen. Now, the bishop in e7 would also offer this knight the opportunity to come in, but Leela does need to keep him where he is. Though A3 stops any potential attack on the queen side. Stockfish calculated best. Well, okay. You calculate knight b4 will be a blank. And for this very reason, ignores it. What the engine did was to advance further. And again, Leela can either take or ignore. Ignore it was for obvious reasons. So she pushed on. But all we know is how dangerous this guy can be on the rim. If this queen on d3 finds a way to join in, a mate is easily accomplished with queen g7, but we know how practice is so different from theory. Stockfish came up with another cracker of a move. Anyone? This is what we played. With Lila once again ignoring, she too pushed on with this guy. a3 now appears, and again via this bishop repositioning, only because of a3, this guy came off. Lila captures, and now another cracking move. Was this push to the fifth? Lila took. Stockfish takes two, and the hat trick box. <laughs> Is that what you call it? The hat trick box now opens up here. If you go for this takes to threaten the rook. This in itself would spell disaster because of this incoming check. And this is how you blow it. Cheap tricks in engine play simply do not work. When this guy came off on c5, Lila came up with this type of attack. There are too many things happening. Do you get rid of the knight? And if so, how? Well, the answer is yes, but not right away. Stockfish slipped in this check first, 
the situation gets intense. If you get the king to find the corner, if you take and take, nothing else but this knight jump into d4, or maybe one better is this rook response. We'll try bow having as a play. If you get the rook to cover for d6, if you grab the knight, take, swap everything on d8, and not takes with a check, but this attack instead. All this is possible because of this guy on h6, and the mate is lacking in one move. You should be seven. Take now with a check. King g8. Rook c3. King f7. Coming with this pin. Something like this push. And all you would need is to slot the bishop in place to save the pawn. a4, g3, and so forth. This game with correct play can only lead to one outcome. Coming back, this is one line of play of so many. When this check appeared, it has simply backed off the knight to block it. And here Stockfish is calculating how best to play it. If you take in the center, take again with the pawn. And if you bring in your rook, should you go on and get rid of this guy how do you cover a3? You don't. And you don't even need to. With the bishop dropping, he's got on f6. Once you come in with this threat, Lila will be out of moves. Bishop f6, for example, for short to this fork, and something will need to come flying off. Queen b6, and you know what? You don't even need the rook just yet. What happens if you use the queen to come in with this nasty attack? Even if you apply this check, once his majesty goes into hiding, yes, the rook now on f8 can in a way reposition here to avoid the knight from even forking again. But the big blow is bound to happen where? With this rook invasion into the seventh. If you challenge the rook with the rook, what would be the best way forwards? It has to be this knight jump, pinning the knight on f7 so bad, he would not know what hit him. Should the knight come off, you will be looking at a mate in two. Take with a check, and after king h8, this is what you need. And let's confirm. Checkmate. If you take the rook from b7, yes, the rook comes off, but you will never need him. Why not? It's because of this check, which is also made, and let's confirm again. Okay, checkmate. Once the knight slots into d8, there is nothing you can do to avoid the mate. Okie dokie, we saw the variation with rookie one. Well, did we? We did. We saw the variation with rookie one. How strong would knight d4 be? If you take the knight, once the bishop is arrested, the only way to avoid the mate would be to jump the knight here. Do this, and after you activate the rook in this way, should you challenge the rook, don't take, but slip in this check first. King h8 is not going to help because after takes, takes, and takes, we know King G8 is a mating one. The alternative to put the rook into F6 is a big no-no. Take the rook with a check, drop the queen, but as soon as you take with a check, Queen F8 is forced and rook takes, and let's confirm again. Ah, checkmate. The only way, well, there is another way to do it actually, and let's see it. It would to take the rook on c8, and once the rook is eliminated, taking the rook with a check is a mating one, and let's hear it way in advance, and let's skip. So, coming back, we saw again the knight retreat, and rather than take, Stockfish holds this very position steady, and pushes on with this guy, and this move, well, was his move any stronger? Oh, this guy on h6 is probably 
the biggest threat of them all because he's the one that is paralyzing everything. Lila wanted to find a way to get to at least the queen on d5 just to be able to release a pin on the knight. And having gone for this avenue of play, this wasn't too much to attack this guy on b2, but with Stockfish covering anyway in this way, after this queen repositioning and knight g5, the knight came off, that drops the bishop, and now via this challenge, Stockfish did it. Both queens departed, and this is how Stockfish attempts to make progress. Rook e8 to this guy to fall, and with Leela chasing now after this guy, we saw rook c1, c6 fell, and after bishop e3, Leela lifts the rook or lifts the second rook into the sixth. With Stockfish trading, rook h4, and Leela opts for this threat. It was a tricky one, too. How many people will pick up this guy using the bishop? Well, if you do, g5 and rook g4, and you instantly get fried. How? Because of this full-up move, g3 and king f8 and stockfish suffers big time here. Coming back, for this very reason, this guy was captured by the rook, Lila in turn grabs hold of this guy too, and via this bishop retreat, Lila backs off the knight to the seventh. The position looks equal, but is it really? With this guy on a5 being a sitting duck, should you take him? This is exactly what Stockfish did. Lila slips in this check, and after the king found the second, after this check followed, and king d3, Lila does go on to grab hold of this guy from b2. There are loose pawns on a3 and c7. Stockfish resorted to this way forward. Lila returns the rook to cover for c7, and now via this bishop response, Lila opts for this knight jump. Doable? Maybe. Rook e4 and knight c6 to this bishop repositioning. The rook swings into the first and with bishop e3 to stop any checks there goes the rook back to where he was. King c4 led to king f7 and via this bishop repositioning Lila opts for this push. The biggest pieces to worry about right now are the kings themselves. King d5 led to the knight to back off. Stockfish applies his check, and via this king responds, there is so much you can do. Rook f6 will secure something, but Stockfish calculated best another way to get there. The engine challenged the rook. Lila slips in with his check, and with his majesty backing off. The rook came off, and Stockfish uses the pawn to capture. Nope. Absolutely not correct. It was the bishop taken instead. This guy on a3 is now unstoppable, or if you like, unobstructed. Is he not? Knight d7 to the king to move. And with Lila doing the same, Stockfish goes for this attack. h5, a4, and this check. That's to king c4, king c7, and with king b5 and king b8, Stockfish simply pushes on. King b7, and to this push 2, Lila jumps the knight here, and you do need to be extremely careful when it comes to knights. Can you take on c5? Stockfish did just this. His Majesty found the rim, and with the knight coming under fire, the knight jumped here. The king made his way up the board, and now via this check, the other was looking to find a way to survive at least. King f6, but to this extremely poor way forwards, this guy then fell, and 
Lila goes mad here. No knight b3 or something that is equal to this. This is what she does. Why was this a huge blunder? It was because of this pin and the game ended in only two moves. h3 led to the taking of the knight with a check and only after his majesty moved into a6 this game ended with the elimination of this guy from h3 and of course after Stockfish secured and mate in 12 moves. A terrific all, all round game but we said this before when engines blunder they blunder and no one can explain them. It's crazy stuff but this was another invaluable Stockfish victory. Now the super final is moving very fast and the super final will not be determined until the very later stages of this competition. Well, certainly more to follow in the meantime. So your chess puzzle are here and you know the drill. Safety always first.